Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming. I'm Lieutenant Bob Crowell, President of the Police Officers Federation of Minneapolis. With me is Sergeant Sheriff Schmidt, Vice President, and Officer Dean Milner, one of our directors. We're here today to let Minnesota voters know they have a very important choice to make Tuesday in the Attorney General race. Doug Wardlow is a great ally of law enforcement. He'll be a fantastic Attorney General. We at the Police Officers Federation of Minneapolis no, Doug is committed to making Minnesota fair and safe. So I'll go rebuild the criminal law division of the AG's office, which has been lacking. He'll focus on public safety. He'll combat the spread of opioids and drugs, other drugs, into our community. He'll work hard to fight human trafficking. Doug will support law enforcement and not stand against us. He'll work with us to keep Minnesota families safe. Minnesota, the choice is clear. Keith Ellison's anti-law enforcement views are disqualifying. Mr. Ellison has a long history of supporting cop killers. As a young patrol officer, I had three years on, I was working third precinct when Officer Jerry Hoff was executed at the Pizza Shack at 17th and Life. <laughs> During that era, Keith Ellison was known as the gang attorney. He uh, represented Sharif Willis, who was suspected of plotting the execution at his home. Um, his ties to the Vice Lords gang are disturbing. Star Tribune editorial board said it best, speaking of Ellison, uh, his previous support for gang members and fugitive Kathleen Salaya create further doubts that he would make it challenging to build a strong relationship with law enforcement. We couldn't agree more. Ellison's past conduct is disqualifying. Minnesota should be concerned about the prospect of him as our top law enforcement official. Most recently, the domestic assault allegations speak for themselves. Someone with that type of history is not qualified for the Office of Top Law Enforcement Official in our state. We're urging Minnesotans to get out and vote for Doug Ward on Tuesday. He will make Minnesota fair and safe. He'll work with law enforcement to solve public safety across Minnesota. I'll stand for any questions. Why? Uh today, uh, so close to the election, late in the season. We've, we feel there's no better timing. It's important with the election coming up this close. Uh, it's, it's important to let Minnesotans where, know where law enforcement stands in this, top, in this important race for us. And how much of your uh, uh, fellow officers, how many of you do you feel like you speak for on these, on these issues? Approximately 900 officers. We represent the, all the Minneapolis police and all the Minneapolis Park police, so approximately 900. We are the elected officials um, that speak on their behalf. Are you saying, sir, that, that these 900 or so officers all feel that... Overwhelmingly. Overwhelmingly. Yes. Keith Ellison has a long history, and it's a negative history with the Minneapolis Police Department. Can you talk a little more about what his involvement was with United for Peace and some of those groups back when the Jerry Hoff... He, he was an attorney involved with United for Peace. He, repre he represented Sharif Willis, who was the, the leader of the Vice Lords at the time. Um, it's a, he was a criminal defense attorney basically for all the gangs. We would see him all the time in, in representing uh, your narcotics dealers, your gang members for shootings and things like that. And did he show up at, at some of those rallies they had back Correct. then? Correct. Yes, he was involved. Yes. Why are you making this case uh, against Keith Ellison today without Mr. Wardlow here? Uh, Mr. Wardlow had other commitments. We, we endorsed uh, Doug Wardlow early on. Keith Ellison says that when I when I talk to him about uh, Sharif Willis specifically and, and all this stuff, um, he says that he does want good relations with police. Uh, that that's part of his response to this. Do you do you in your experience? Can you comment on that? I, I just I don't wholeheartedly believe that. I believe uh, Keith would like the public to believe that. Um, I think he's got a different agenda. That quite frankly is anti-law enforcement. He has talked about the Attorney General's office maybe being more involved in investigating officer-involved shootings. Uh, given what you believe about his past, is that something you think his office would be qualified to do? I don't think it would be qualified, Tom, no. I think it, it would be a, um, more of a conflict of interest with, the, with his historical relations with the police. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Why specifically would it be a conflict of interest? Well, you know, he's been on the other side of the law, spoke, so to speak, as a defense attorney all those years. Uh, I don't even know if he's actually a licensed attorney right now in the state. I think that was brought up before. I'm not certain.
but he's been on the other side representing criminal defendants against our officers for many years. Um, I think he, he has a, a bias against police, and I don't think that he could be impartial if he, if he uh, started in a role along that path. Let, let me ask this, this Lieutenant. Um, beyond what, what Keith, Keith Ellison, Ellison specifically, do you think that it would be appropriate for the Attorney General of the State of Minnesota to have some degree of oversight of uh, investigations of officer-involved shootings. I, I'm, I'm talking about now. Take take Ellison out of the picture. Right. I, I think there's enough uh, layers of review over law enforcement already. I think there's plenty when you look at all the, the different layers: internal investigations, civil suits, um, in, indictments, those types of things. I think that that it is layered upon layer enough already. Well, the, let me ask you this because the for lack of a better term, the Black Lives Matter folks, okay? And, and presumably what you're saying is that is that Mr. Ellison is allied with them or he's more sympathetic to them, or that be correct? Yes. Okay? They have said repeatedly that these investigations have been whitewashed. I, I mean there's there's no way of there's no way of getting around what they're saying. My question is, might some balance in this be uh, justified under the circumstances given that the black community sees this as all the, the law enforcement community backing themselves up and covering each other, might it be a good thing to have some balance with that, whether it be Keith Ellison or somebody else? Well, you've got to understand it's not law enforcement review. When it goes beyond there, it's county attorney review. Um, there, you know, there's grand juries. Those, those people are certainly not in bed with law enforcement. I can tell you that if, if those discussions were had, I, I would like to be a part of the process as other union leaders and police departments would. And, you know, we're not totally opposed and that would fight something like that. We'd have to hear the basics we want to see the, uh, at the table in development. Lieutenant, uh, Keith Ellison says that since those days when there was associations with Louis Farrakhan and some of these gang issues that came up many years ago, since then he served in the state legislature, he has served in Congress. He, he says his views have changed, he's evolved. Should should you take him at his word on that? I, I truly don't. I don't. Personally, I don't believe that. You think he still holds anti-law enforcement views? I, I do, I do. And I mean, you, you look at the most recent things, that, that when, when a couple different women come forward on domestic assault allegations, those, those are alarming for someone running for that position. Lieutenant, could you clarify who a couple different women are? I, I, well, it's been in the, it's been covered in the media. There's been two different two different uh, reports that have been released. It's in social media. It's, there was a 911 call to Minneapolis by a female. There was certainly uh, another one spoke out with the media. I'm not here to name victims' names. Um, as far as Doug Wardlow, the credit, one of the criticisms against Doug Wardlow comes with a, um, from a community that you guys have to have to serve as well. That's the LGBT community, uh, specifically his most recent work. Um, with the Alliance Defending Freedom. Uh, how do you justify standing up here today saying we endorse Doug Wardlow with those in, specifically the Minneapolis LGBT community, who say Doug Wardlow is against us and who we are? Well, you know, that's another matter. We're here to talk about law enforcement issues. Uh, we've got members of our federation that are in the LGBT community. Um, they are supportive of Doug Wardlow, from what I've heard. Alleged uh, past statements that you had made about Keith Ellison were the subject of litigation and complaints uh, at the uh, at the uh, police department. Can you remove that from your statements today? Or do you feel as though you are the best person to be talking about this issue with, with regards to? Conflict? Can you can you clarify? My yeah, I believe it was uh, 2007 uh, litigation with regards to uh, several uh, officers of color alleging that you made statements to the effect of uh, Ellison was a terrorist. Uh, well, first, I was never involved in any of the litigation. I never was to depose, never a part of that. Uh, and that statement was an, an internal affairs investigation that I wish would be released because that was at a training session with 26 Minneapolis supervisors at it, and 23 of the 26 specifically remember I said nothing of the sort. Uh, that person that made that allegation is no longer with the department and that allegation was false and it got out there in the media and social media and gained a life of its own and it's absolutely untrue. Never made the statement. There was a full and complete investigation on that. You guys are union members. Doug Wardlow, when he was a lawmaker, pushed for the, the right to work uh, bill. It was, it was uh, his bill that he <clears throat> push. How do you reconcile that? Well, you know, the, the Janus Law with a, uh, you know, the that kind of takes takes 
care of the right to work issues. And I'll point out that my membership uh, had no fair share members. We are all 100% uh, full membership. And since the Janus Law came out, we are reassigning all of our members up. And there's only we, we only have maybe 50 remaining out of our 900. And it's not that they're avoiding resign up. Uh, it's just a matter of tracking them down where they work and, and getting to sign new membership cards. Uh, our, our federation is very strong. Um, they're all 100% committed and on their own. So the Janus Law kind of takes care of that right to work issue anyway in fair share. Well, for, that's for that's for government employees. But what about what about your brothers and sisters in private sector? I, you know, I think uh, I, that's up to the other unions and see what see what they say. Um, I, you know, that'd be interesting to see where some of the trades and labor stand on that. Along that line, Lieutenant, um, independent of of the Jams decision, right to work specifically, are there any concerns that Doug Wardlow may not be as strong strong an advocate? For unions, as say, as say a Democrat would be. Well, and again, we're we're talking about two different things here. This is the AG's office, the top law enforcement official. Doug's not going to be in in the senator house making laws that would affect, you know, unions and right to work and things. We got to define what the, what the scope of the job is. Um, so I really I, I think it's kind of irrelevant for the position he holds. What what impresses us most is he's going to roll out a criminal division again that's going to assist in criminal prosecutions, uh, assist counties in, in putting major criminals away. What is a bigger, uh, as, you, as you weigh these two candidates, not Keith Ellison or yes, Doug Wardlow? I think it's, a, it's pretty much an even split. Um, leave Keith, Keith Ellison out of the race. Uh, there were other, there were other you know, Democrats in that race, obviously, and some very friendly to ours. You know, Deb Hillstrom for one. Um, but Doug was very impressive to our board when he screened with us on, on his vision for the office. Do you have a poll rank and file uh, among your membership to find out where they stand, or is it pretty much a board decision on who to it, vote it, it is a board decision. They elect us. Um, to, we make those decisions as a board. Uh, they don't. They don't like what we do. We, we can hear about it at a federation meeting. But I can assure you, on this race, there has been no controversy. Uh, the talk of law enforcement, not just within our federation, but others, is we can't let Ellison have that office. Could you? Uh, uh, Clarify when the poll was taken and when you arrived at the decision to endorse. We didn't take a poll of our membership. Our members elect us to do all the political screening. There's mm -hmm. ten members on my board that represent the 900. Um, we hold monthly meetings and they come come and voice their opinion on you know, politics is an ongoing agenda item at this time of year. Okay, so ask then what about what what point in time did you uh, put your backing behind Wardlow uh, and decide that he was the right choice? Oh, it was it was early on. Um, Months, months ago. Yeah, August. Lieutenant, you've drawn fire for possibly violating campaign finance law, um, using local police uniforms and insignias on campaign materials for candidates you support. Do you think Wardlow should be concerned about this and associating with you? I haven't drawn any fire for violating any campaign laws. Uh, there's clear policy in our department manual on the use of our uniform with political representations. Um, it's it's absurd to think otherwise. The chief and I have discussed this matter just the other day. It's it's right under department policy. All right, thank Thanks you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you.